Hey there, this is MathCamp321 bringing you question number three of the Park Algebra 2 practice test from 2014-2015 school year. Uh, this question says, what extraneous solution arises when the equation square root of x plus 3 equals 2x is solved for x by first squaring both sides of the equation? And again, you'll notice in the red box the potential pitfall that I think might happen is that students might fail to check for extraneous solutions, or they might not even know what extraneous solution means, and that's exactly what they're asking for in this question. So let me really quickly define for you what an extraneous solution is. And that is an ex a solution that occurs when solving a problem, but doesn't actually check the originally stated problem. So whenever you're solving an equation in math, you're supposed to take your answers and check them to see if they're valid and that they work. And uh, sometimes all the answers work, but there are occasions where one or more than one answer does not work. So that's what they're asking for here. Which is the answer that doesn't work? So uh, the, the equation is the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 2x. Now, I teach pre-calculus, and in my pre-calculus class in my school, we do a lot of graphing. So whenever I see an equation, I think of, the, I think of it with this graphic lens, and I know that the square root of x plus 3 has a certain graph. And I also know that the graph y equals 2x has a certain graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph both of these things on the same set of axes. And we're going to have a very quick discussion. And this may or may not help you, but I'll, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. So I'm going to start by graphing the square root of x plus 3. Now the graph of the square root of x plus 3 looks like a wing of a bird shifted three units to the left. So I'm going to go put three tick marks, one, two, three. And I'm going to draw this wing of the bird, and it's going to look like this. Now using another color, I'm going to graph y equals 2x. And this is a line with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 0. So that's going to look something like this. All right, that was a really bad line, but I think you get the idea. Now it just so happens that when graphs cross, that represents their real solutions. So the real solution to this equation is going to be something positive over in this area over, over here. So let's keep that in mind as we do the algebraic solution to this equation. So I'm going to start by just writing the problem over again. And they're actually directing us in the problem to square both sides. So I'm going to physically do that. I'm going to take the left hand side and I'm going to square it. And I'm going to take the right hand side and I'm going to square it. So if you're squaring something that's already being square rooted, that operation undoes the original operation. So I'm really just going to be left with x plus 3 on the left. And on the right hand side, I've got 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. Now like the last problem, I'm left with a quadratic. And I know this because of the x squared. And to solve a quadratic, there are many ways to do it. But your first step should be to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to say that 0 equals 4x squared minus x minus 3. And I think the method of choice for me to solve this is going to be by factoring. And it's very similar to the last question, question number 2. So if you want to check back at that one, if you haven't looked at that video, I'm going to factor this in much the same way. Now, if you don't factor this sort of thing in the way that I do it, that's okay. But I'm going to start by multiplying 4 and negative 3 and getting negative 12. And then I'm going to very methodically list all factor pairs of 12, which would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And the factor pair that I pick is going to be the one that has the difference of 1, which would be 3 and 4. And now I'm going to put signs, and I'm going to make it plus 3 and minus 4. And now I'm going to create two fractions, the numerators of which will be 4x. And I'm getting that from this guy here, but I'm dropping the squared. And the denominators of these fractions will be the circled answers over here. So plus 3 and minus 4. And when I read these fractions downward, those turn into my factors. But I have to reduce if possible. So 4 over 3 cannot be reduced. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 4x plus 3. 
Now this fraction, 4 over negative 4, can be reduced. They can reduce by 4. So instead of writing 4x minus 4, I'm going to write x minus 1. Now using the zero product property, I'm going to set each factor equal to zero and solve. So I'll start with 4x plus 3 equals zero. And that's going to leave me with x equals negative 3 fourths. And the second answer that I get is x is equal to 1. So in doing this problem algebraically, we get two answers x equals negative 3 fourths and x equals 1. Now if we go back and we look at this graph, x equals 1 seems like it's a very reasonable answer for this point of intersection. So x equals 1 is the answer, which would mean that the extraneous solution would be the answer that we got that doesn't work. And that's going to be x equals negative 3 fourths. If you were to take that answer and plug it into the original, you're not going to get a true statement. So the answer that they're looking for is the answer that's extraneous, which is x equals negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and put a red box around that, just so you know what the actual answer is, because I put a box around two things here. You know what, I'm going to put one more box, just so we are completely on the same page. So the answer that I've triple boxed is the answer that they want, x equals negative 3 fourths. This is the extraneous solution. This is the answer that, when plugged in, would not validate the original equation.